This ball of clay is one and an eighth pound, so it's going to be a little bit smaller. But otherwise, it's really similar to the tumbler shape. So even on a smaller ball of clay like this, I still like to center up into a cone because I feel like it centers more of the core of the ball of clay rather than just the outside surface of the clay. You might have noticed I spent a lot of time cleaning up my workspace and my tools, and that's intentional. Uh, it comes from my philosophy that if I want to make clean, um, precise work, that I want to use clean tools and have clean hands. Through almost all of the throwing process, you'll notice I have a sponge in my right hand. It's not necessary. Uh, I could probably throw just as effectively without a sponge, but I like that it's, it's wet, and if I start to hit a little dry spot on the pot, I can just give a little squeeze and get a little extra water. When I'm getting ready to do what I think will be my final pull, my inside hand kind of curls up from the bottom edge of the curved surface up into this side of the wall several times, just kind of working that extra clay up into the clay wall while my right hand remains stationary. I've also had to train myself not to throw as thin as I possibly can. That is, I have to always remember that this piece is going to get stretched and that the clay wall is going to get thinner as I stretch it. So if I throw as thin as I can now, then the piece usually tears when I go to start my stretching. I also have to keep in mind how much stretching is going to happen at different parts of the pot. So right now, the piece is unevenly thick. Maybe, maybe this thick at the bottom and this thick at the top because I'm going to stretch more at the bottom. Using a, a wooden rib down at this bottom edge is a good time to remove some excess water, but it's also a good way to compress this part of the clay wall up and in to make the, um, the pot less likely to collapse during stretching. So when I do this rib mark, uh, it's important to notice that the rib will kind of, I will turn it and almost do like a scooping or a lifting action. And that's really going to create um, a confident mark as it goes up and around the form. And if I lose the clarity of that edge from that first mark, I can just go back and put it in now. There's a direct relationship between the amount of time I spend torching and the size and thickness of the clay wall of the piece I'm working on. So for pieces in the kind of cup to small bowl scale, I usually go up and down twice and then back up. And that seems to be enough. The biggest difference for me between making a mug and a tumbler is that this piece is going to have a handle. And because of that handle, the piece is going to have what seems to me is more of a, a front and a back side where the handle kind of frames the profile of the piece. So I feel like I can get away with um, a little bit less symmetrical stretching on a pot like this because when I go to pull the handle, I can rotate the pot and find where the handle ma makes the most sense or frames the most interesting profile of the pot.
I try to stretch this bottom portion uh, just enough that it starts to activate this waist area and, and get a little rhythmical moving. Um, on some pots, this bottom area is a little thinner and I get uh, kind of like dense uh, in the form just under these stretched areas. And that can cause a problem when I go to trim. And when that does happen, I just make a couple passes with the finger pushing those dents back up into the form.